the Curtin University Sustainability Policy Institute, to which we fondly refer to as CASP, was established eight years ago and as the name shows we are on the cusp of making things happen. We have a big agenda to make this world more sustainable and we're tackling this head on by trying to find practical solution and dealing with problems that are theoretically very difficult, wicked problems. We started as a small unit with five people and probably about 30 PhD students, which is small only by comparison to where we are now. We have about 20 staff and 100 PhD students, and we believe that we are one of the largest, if not the largest, institute that focuses on sustainability and has a very active and large PhD uh, student body. The CASP areas of research cover things from sustainable cities to sustainable cost and resilience and participatory sustainability as well as innovations that can implement sustainability, that can facilitate the transition to sustainability. Green systems of innovation refer to the concept as how we transition from an economy, from a business as usual model, to an economy that is decarbonized, that allows for nature conservation, but at the same time, it allows improvement in the quality of life of people. We're working with China very much, mainly because of the fact that the Western Australian economy is closely linked to developments that are happening in China. And China is at the moment doing a transition from being really focused on economic growth to trying to focus on green economic growth and we're also developing links that allow students to do a double award and be awarded a PhD from both Curtin University and a Chinese university. Another example with the work that's happening around green innovation is the relationships that we are having with Bangladesh and working with the Bangladeshi government. CASP has at the moment probably about 20 Bangladeshi PhD students, but we want to see more topics that relate to Bangladesh, we want to find real solutions that work and that support the cultural values and the potential that the Bangladeshi landscape has. Another example relates to our own indigenous people. We are currently having an Australian Research Council grant together with the Smile Community Services and that grant looks at what are the training opportunities, what is the capacity building that, that SMILE is providing. We actually want them to be able to use the knowledge that has been accumulated for thousands of years and how this can be used to support a low carbon economy. Sustainability in cities is about moving towards a future where social and technical innovations can help us to improve our way of life making cities that are more livable, where we use less resources and less energy. I think that the challenge facing us in many of our cities is the actual transition to um, sustainable environments. We've been working a, a lot with these issues in Europe, uh, where we've been uh, using the concept of living labs to look at social and technical innovation, both in terms of the fabric of buildings, but also in terms of districts or precincts as they're called in Australia within the actual cities. The aim being to create new innovation that can be replicated across city environments. We've been working with uh, modern building materials and that includes working in the prefab and modular space, an area which uh, is relatively poorly developed in Australia, only about 4% of the market is uh, prefab modular at the moment. In Sweden, Scandinavia it's about 75%. That's something that will come into the Australian space and we are working with um, companies to, in research projects uh, to, to, to enable this process. Within the whole of the framework of um, social and technical innovation, we're also developing a climate kick in Australia, kick being a knowledge innovation community. We're working with the top universities in the science, technology and engineering and maths um, area. And we're looking to create a space of climate innovation that will provide a competitive advantage for Australia as we move into a new area of uh, livable cities. The Resilient Systems Programme is an action research programme aimed at encouraging communities 
and especially coastal and regional areas to bounce back or rather bounce forward from traumas or impacts such as climate change. The target of resilience is always sustainability. An example of the sort of action research project we do is to run participatory mapping workshops with communities. So we gather stakeholders and community members together and we work through with them what the implications are of sea level rise or bushfire to their local area. And they also identify pathways forward to the future. We work closely with traditional owners to develop a set of principles about how Western scientific knowledge systems can engage with Aboriginal knowledge systems to create a respectful knowledge partnership. Curtin University also has shares in the Margaret River Education Campus and CUSP has a number of action research projects running out of campus. A number of PhD researchers and Masters researchers are also based at the Margaret River Education Campus taking advantage of the facilities there and the beautiful regional setting. It's energised Margaret River towards sustainability in fantastically productive ways. Council's involvement with CUSP has led to a huge increase in the people coming to sustainability seminars. So that's been good. And all of these aspects are involving the community in providing the learning information that they need and the capacity for local research. Democracy is probably the best, um, most resilient way to work with sustainability, but our democratic systems aren't working well. Uh, people don't trust politicians, people don't even trust the institutions of government. Governments are really there for the short term and they're looking at the short term interests and what will get them elected next time around. So what sort of governance do we need to be able to get a sustainable world? And that's the work I do and it is working with something we call deliberative democracy. And we find that people really respond to that and they're incredibly wise, and that if you give them the data, the information, the science, they come up with decisions that are eminently feasible, eminently doable, often a lot more ambitious than what governments would have done in the first place. And if nothing else, they could be advising government. Australia-wide, we have used this work. We created the first Australian Citizens' Parliament where a random sample of every single electorate worked together over five days to come up with how do we strengthen our democracy. This is the work that can revitalise the democratic systems we have and so we still achieve democracy but we achieve it far better than we currently are managing to do. Well, this has been a 30-year journey in establishing a sustainability policy institute with a global orientation, but very practice-oriented and with a, an opportunity to help create a whole new profession. We are now attracting people from around the world. 100 PhDs are a very good-sized institute. Uh, there aren't many like it. And they're coming to us because they are not happy with the professional orientation they've got. They need to change, they need to create a greater contribution. And we can help do that. So we are creating this new doctorate in sustainable development in order to fulfil this need to work on the sustainable development goals as they apply in their own countries and in Australia. And we have plenty of opportunities to actually demonstrate this new approach and to help solve major global problems at the same time as, as creating good work for people to do. My undergraduate study was in climate studies but I didn't particularly want to be a pure scientist like that. I wanted to do some work that would look at people and have real world applications. So my project's looking at how sustainability features can be integrated at the design stage of precincts. 
So looking at um, what sort of business models and, and financial models can be used to get companies to put in sustainability features such as solar panels or batteries uh, instead of just going for the business as usual. CUSP has been a really good environment to come in as a new researcher who's just sort of finding my way around the scene. Everyone here has been really friendly and helpful and, and it's been a great environment to see lots of collaborative research happening and uh, people with lots of different interests all coming together to work towards something better. The research project title is Financing Urban Real to Land Value Capture and it is based in India, taking five cities as the case studies. I'm familiar with the system, how the rules work, who are the officials and how the urban planning is done. I also understand the gaps of research because they are not exposed to the things which I am getting exposed in Australia now. <laughs> the exposure I get in CUSP because there are people working in pretty much every discipline in terms of sustainability. I'm hopeful that will help particularly India, that research to build more urban real system which will ultimately lead to a sustainable cities and that research might help the other developing countries also. Basically, I'm researching why do Australians eat uh, red meat, and particularly I'm interested in their um, attitudes, perceptions towards red meat consumption and uh, their way of changing uh, for sustainability reasons. I want people to think about uh, what harm to the nature is done and what harm to the animals is done as well. I'm going to create a website, stories about cow slaughtering and all of these things that people eat and consume and drink. But I want to do something that uh, will be for the humanity and for the society to make a difference. CASP is fantastic because I have a really supportive uh, supervisors, plus the rest of the staff here, every single time I'm in the campus, uh, is really, really good and, and I love working with these people. They are fantastic. My PhD topic is sustainable investment and I'm taking Australia's venture capital industry as a case. Where I'm trying to take it is that focusing solely on the financial performance is not going to make this industry viable and industry players must look into the emerging areas of the risk especially coming from the environmental and the social concerns and there is a huge opportunity for the industry to look at where actually social investment is taking place the environmental investment is taking place there are new ideas and new entrepreneurship is coming up and they could invest in those areas and nurture those funds and that could make the industry truly viable and it could contribute to the broader economy as well. I'm from China and doing my PhD here on the Chinese urban transport because China has become the largest automobile producer and consumer since 2009. And I will choose the most influential mega cities like Beijing, Shanghai and Guangzhou as a case studies. I want to try and find out the current level and the projected future levels of Chinese automobile dependence. And finally, I try to provide the relationship between Chinese very dense urban fabrics and the Chinese urban transport problems. My PhD was looking at increasing the knowledge of climate change in fishing communities. My focus was the Abrolhos Islands fishing group in Geraldton, just off the coast. So we spoke to the fishers and we also shared knowledge of what the scientific community had found. And we ended up asking the fishers if they would take photographs of the things they really loved about their community and their industry and also any environmental changes that they'd seen over the past five to ten years. And we brought the fishing community back, we selected a whole lot of photos because we had over a thousand photos and we put those into a large exhibition at the Geraldton Museum. We were telling the fishers' story, which was the collapse of their community, and also the scientists' story, which recorded a drop in the number of rock globs to larvae along the coast and the climate scientists was talking about a change to currents and weather. We won lots of awards and the museum decided to take it to their other coastal museums around Western Australia. So my PhD has been fantastic fun, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I think it's told a really important story and I'm nearing the end and yeah, it was, it's been a great research project. My research is focused on renewable energy and accelerating the transition of renewable energy 
to Western Australia and the world. I'm presenting my candidacy today and I've basically selected my case study projects. I've started two of them. So one is a solar lifestyle village and the other one is a community wind and solar farm in Margaret River. I find CUS to be a great networking opportunity. I've met incredible people um, and made connections through CUSP that I wouldn't have been able to make on my own. And I've been exposed to a lot of really good research and research projects that have advanced my research and my potential scope for implementations. It's been all about sort of creating that community and that d discussion, uh, which to me is one of the most important parts about the academic side of things. I think energy drives me. Yeah, yeah, I've got a passion for the industry. I think it's the most important industry there is at the moment and it sort of enables all of the developments and advancements we've made recently and we're on the cusp of a huge transition and yeah that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Sam and I were actually doing our PhDs. We did some volunteer work on the side with the local high school, South Fremantle Senior High School. And we helped them to become the first carbon neutral school in Australia. And we wanted to start our own business. So we actually turned a lot of the research into the business, which is Simply Carbon. One of the big projects we're working on at the moment is a low carbon schools um, pilot program. We're running over two years with uh, about 15 schools in, in Perth and we're helping them essentially to do what South Fremantle Senior High School did. We're running it as Simply Carbon and then the CRC is contributing a scholarship. We've got a Porsche who's an amazing research student um, joining onto the program. We'll be publishing along the way and really yeah, documenting it from previous research done but also taking that research forward as well. WGV by Landcorp is a two hectare residential infill project in White Gum Valley in Fremantle in Western Australia. All up there'll be around 80 dwellings which will house up to 150 people. We're targeting a 60 to 70 percent reduction in operational energy and water use as well as operational greenhouse gas emission reduction. The project is hoping to set a benchmark not only here in Western Australia but nationally around high performance low carbon residential precincts. The project's also one of a handful of developments that's received international certification under the One Planet Living Sustainability Framework. But perhaps the most exciting thing about the project is the range of partners involved and the collaboration that's come out of this. So in addition to the lead developer being Landcorp, there's a number of private industry developers who will be delivering the multi-residential apartment projects. Also we've got other agencies like the Water Corporation and Department of Water who will be heavily involved in looking at the outcomes of the water efficiency and urban water management trials that will be happening here. There's also local government involvement through the City of Fremantle as well as research organisations like Curtin University, the CRC for Low Carbon Living and also ARENA and that's where Gemma comes in. This ARENA project along with the project partners is uh, more than $3 million worth of investment to demonstrate how solar and storage can be deployed in the strata part of the property sector. The solar panels coupled with the batteries will demonstrate how we can take homes virtually off-grid, reducing their reliance on grid-based energy by more than 70% and also sell their excess power to other consumers. So it's really about the emergence of citizen utilities. The great thing about White Gum Valley is that we can see and monitor innovation in practice. All the people around the world. 2030 Agenda is for you, is for everyone, everywhere. I was very excited about the work of the United Nations around the new Sustainable Development Goals that were agreed last year in September in New York. And we thought it would be nice to do a workshop in Western Australia to bring people in Western Australia together around the SDGs, what it might mean for Western Australia to embrace the Sustainable Development Goals. We brought together a diverse group of people from different organisations, community-based organisations, research institutions, including groups like the West Australian Council of Social Service, uh, representing the welfare sector, also people from Conservation Council of WA representing the environment sector. Media the workshop focused on both the goals but also how people could translate the goals into activities that were meaningful for them in Western Australia and would give extra credence to what people are already doing around sustainability and connecting issues like water and
and health and education, uh, together with a sense of well-being for people in Western Australia, but also connecting to others around the world. Uh, we had a meeting about uh, a month after the workshop and people decided it would be good to set up this WA SDG network. So the WA SDG network has been a, an informal network that allows people to work together collaboratively and CUSP has played a sort of independent role in a sense in bringing those different players together, different stakeholders together, um, in a way that uh, could play a lead role but also let people play to their own strengths and pull out their own interests as part of that engagement. It's a collaborative project between Murdoch Uni and CUSP looking at nitrogen fixation and how that can improve agricultural productivity and even sustainability. Symbiotic nitrogen fixation is absolutely essential. Mm. Uh, life on this planet absolutely depends on a source of fixed end. So we have to have a source of fixed end from somewhere. Uh, we can either provide that artificially through the use of fertilisers or we can actually become more sustainable and actually use the symbiosis to drive uh, fixed nitrogen mm. input into our biological systems. So, crop production for example. So the international project has really started to explore the, the mechanisms behind all of these, these things. And then the next step is to apply sustainability mm. aspects into that project. It's really an enormous project with huge implications and hopefully it will keep growing. It's not just the work we're doing right now in terms of what you genetically your mm. genomic work now, but it's a whole stack of other stuff that will come from it like economic development in uh, underdeveloped areas or um, the social implications of having better health because you have better agricultural productivity and, and better food and so on. One of the points of doing this sort of collaboration is I think in sustainability there's of, often not enough connection between scientific experts and the other people that come into the sustainability dialogue. So part of the point of this is to really try to get scientists talking to policy makers, talking to developers, uh, talking to communities and you get practical outcomes. How do you have that conversation? How do you get the knowledge that people like the, the group at Murdoch have, that scientific knowledge, and how do you make that useful and applied? And that's really the driving force behind us running the collaboration. We had nobody in Western Australia at the time, nobody that understood the field of science and technology interaction with government and economy. So as far back as the early 80s, we decided that it was very important, it was a responsibility to do something about uh, establishing the means of developing people. We owe a lot to this man. He, it was his vision, his dream that set this going. I remember that time looking at a, a Venn diagram with three circles. One of it is innovation, the other one was sustainability and the third one was human values. Uh, and my work at that time was around innovation uh, and I also thought that I know a little bit about human values and I didn't even know the meaning of sustainability because I was coming from Bulgaria, from socialist Bulgaria and there wasn't such a word in the dictionary. So it was a completely new concept but a concept that is so powerful and so attractive and so inspiring uh, and there is something that Peter often refers to as the magic. There is a magic in this concept uh, that inspires people to do the right integration and the right balance between technology and science development and people and not just the people of today, it's also the care for the future generations and the responsibility that we hold for future generations and the way we treat the world and the way we live today.